All right, what's up, Facebook? Um, my name is Sharonda Parker. I am a sex expert. Um, and basically, what I do is I give people information about uh, relationships, um, intimacy, and I basically told everybody at ten o'clock I'm going live. I'm going live. Because I have gotten so many inboxes about a certain subject containing, uh, what not concerning rebuilding trust. Um, and I just feel like when you're starting to get so many people that are sending you so many messages about the same thing, sometimes you need to take out that time and really uh, get some dialogue going about the subject at hand. And I said, well, you know what? 10 o'clock Monday morning. I'm going to put together um, a live video about rebuilding trust. And, I'm, and you're going to see me looking from one camera to the next because I'm going live on both of my pages at the same time. So I'm operating with my iPad and my phone at the same time. I want y'all to come in. I want y'all to invite people in. I want y'all to talk. I want to make sure that this is an effective live video so that people are really getting good information. Because as a married woman... I want to see other married couples win. Point blank period. I want to see other married couples win. I have a national following of, you know, 20 <laughs> so many there, whatever, whatever. And I just feel like this is not just a problem that's going on down south or a problem that's just going on <laughs> black people. This is an issue that's going on across the world. Betrayal happens. All I'm going to tell you is this here. I have been married 18 years this summer. I have been with my husband for almost 20 years. And if you think throughout 20 years of being with somebody that every day is going to be blissful and happy and this, that, the other, when you sign up for marriage, you will be sadly mistaken. I have to let you know that. I have to let you know that when you sign up, they tell you, Good and bad, sickness and health. When they up there and they reading those vows to you, they telling you all of this because the people that's telling you this, they know that these days will come where your relationship will be tested, where your trust will be tested, where your, you, you know, everything that you think about this person will be tested at some point in time throughout this relationship. And if you signing up for marriage, because you think that this person not going to do nothing throughout this point in time to hurt you. You are sadly mistaken. And it ain't just that person hurting you. I'm talking about you hurting them as well. A lot of times people think when I do these videos that I man bash. No, I don't. Because I'm a, I'm very non-biased when it comes down to relationships and I call a spade a spade. And women hurt men just like men hurt men. And that's the truth. So if you think I'm just going to get on here and man bash, you can go ahead and log off right now. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about the things that couples go through. And the thing is, a lot of times, you know, y'all go to these anniversary reporters and Everybody's so happy and oh my God, it's so many years and all of this. But if you talk to any of them long enough and they truthful with you, they're going to tell you that hurt happened on both ends. That's the truth. So rebuilding trust. That's what this video is about. Rebuilding trust. Okay. The first thing that you have to understand when you're dealing with people and, you, and you're dealing with rebuilding trust is... There are no perfect people. There, there is no such thing as a perfect person. A person going to hurt you sooner or later. Simple as that. I don't understand how people get into relationships and they have these expectations from people of perfection. And I'm just like, shit, they betrayed Jesus. He was hurt by the people that he was with every day. So what the fuck make you think that you're going to walk this earth and, and somewhere along the lines, you ain't going to be betrayed and you ain't going to be hurt when Jesus went through it. So now that the betrayal has happened, now that the trust has been broken, 
now that they have done whatever it is that they did to you, now you have to decide if this is worth rebuilding. You got to make that choice. Is this shit even worth saving? You got to make that, that choice. So, the steps to rebuilding trust. One, it requires you to be real with yourself. To say, you know what? Do I really like this motherfucker that much? Do I really love this motherfucker that much? Is this shit really worth saving? Are my good days really outweighing my bad days with this motherfucker? You got to ask yourself that shit. You got to be real with you. Because everybody relationship ain't worth saving. Everybody marriage ain't worth saving. You got to ask yourself. Am I dealing with somebody that really don't have any intentions on being monogamous? It just ain't them. See, this video about rebuilding trust, this ain't about habitual cheaters. Meaning that every day you look up, this motherfucker doing something ain't got no business. You done seen evidence over and over and over again. It done been putting your face bitches constantly at your house, you can't like this ain't for the motherfucker who don't have no intentions on doing right. And only you know if the person that you are with has no intentions on doing right. You know. You know from the moment you met them if they was really meant to be in a monogamous relationship. Because a lot of times we are in denial as women. And we can't say that, you know what? This motherfucker really ain't Intending on being monogamous. They ain't meant to be in no one relationship. And the person that's with you, they got to be real with themselves and say, you know what? One woman will never satisfy me. I will always need multiple women. Or one man just ain't going to get it for me. I'm going to always need multiple men because what this one ain't doing, somebody else going to step up and do. I know people that really live like this. This one man don't make enough money to take care of me. So I need two or three of these motherfuckers to come through because my lifestyle just that fucking extravagant. And I need him to take care of these type of bills over here. And I need him to take care of these bills over here. You know if the man that you married have an income that can really sustain you and take care of you. And you know if you still need all of these other motherfuckers to handle shit that he can't handle. You know that you're not intending on being monogamous. This video ain't for you. Because you already know you ain't intending on. And I don't like to necessarily say that you ain't shit. I don't want to say you know you ain't shit. I just want to say that you know that you're making a personal choice to never be monogamous. And I don't knock you for it. I just think that you need to go in a relationship knowing that you're not the type of person to be monogamous. And you need to tell the people that you're dealing with, look, you will never be the only one. See, my mama, the woman that raised me. She let all the motherfuckers know you will never be the only one. It's a bunch of you motherfuckers. Either you gonna roll with it or you gonna roll the fuck on. And you give that person a choice whether if they want to deal with you or not. You got people that are really in open marriages. Okay? And these people know that yes, I want to build with this person. Yes, I want to have children with this person. Yes, I want to have benefits and retirement and buy a house with this person, do all these important things with this one person. But when it comes to me sexually, you cannot please me alone. I need multiple people to please me sexually. You got to go in it saying this about yourself. So this video ain't for them type of people. I want to talk to the people who genuinely want a monogamous marriage or a, marriage, uh, a monogamous relationship. And somewhere along the lines, shit got fucked up. The first thing you got to do is forgive. Really forgive. Really say, you know what? I can accept that you fucked up. But I can also accept that you're telling me that this shit will never happen again. And I need you to understand that if this shit ever happens again... That it cannot be. It's nothing you can tell me. And you got to understand that when I walk, I'm letting you know that I'm walking because we have already went through this and we came to the conclusion that I can't deal with this. 
over and over and over again. And I'm not going to accept this over and over again. I can accept a fucking mistake or a, a bad choice one time. I can accept that. That's what you're telling them. When you say I forgive you, you're saying I don't like what you did, but I love you just that much to forgive you and to say, you know what? I want what we got just that much to I, 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 I'm willing to I'm willing to say, you know what? I'm going to give you this one. But it can't ever happen again. And the lines of communication got to be open. Another thing that has to happen once uh, trust has been broken is transparency has to happen. Meaning, you don't get to have codes on your phone and fingerprint detection. And even if you got a fingerprint detection just because you don't want somebody else to be able to get your phone and do whatever, I got to be able to get in that bitch. You don't get to have all of these secret bank accounts and all of this kind of shit. If you do, I got to be able to know what's going on with them motherfuckers. Transparency has to happen. I got to know who your friends are and who the people I got to know this shit because trust has been broken and we got to rebuild it. And some people ain't about to ain't about to be with the lifestyle of transparency. Them people ain't ready to rebuild trust. If they can't give you the codes to their shit and you can't have access to everything they got to do with them, they not ready to rebuild trust. They not ready to rebuild it. They not. A lot of times people don't understand that infidelity is equivalent to a death. To some people. It literally breaks them down. I'm talking about shatters them, have them questioning everything in life, altering everything. But a lot of times people that really, really are sorry about what they've done, they go through a whole nother set of emotions too. Because every day they got to look at the person that they hurt and know that they hurt that person. And they got to know that the shit that they did, they can never be able to go back and undo it. See, when a person died, they dead. You can't go back and undo that. When you cheat on a person... It's equivalent to a death because you can never go back to undo what you did. And no matter how many times they forgive you and say, I want to move on. They have a knowing in their mind that you did that to them and that you are capable of hurting them in that type of way. Another thing would be rebuilding trust. The only thing that helps is time. That person has to constantly work to show you that. I have no interest in ever doing this to hurt you again. See, that's why I told them, I'm not talking to the people that don't have no intentions on being monogamous. I'm not talking to the people that know that the people that they're with have no intentions on being monogamous. This ain't for you. Because you know you ain't about to do right anyway. You know this. Transparency has to happen. True forgiveness has to happen. And another thing that has to happen is you all have to come up with ways to strengthen your bond with each other. When you go on vacation, you ain't got to have a, a, a pack of fucking couples to go on vacation with you in order for you to build a bond. The bond ain't intended for all of these other people. Sometimes y'all just got to do some shit by yourself and get back to that place of what made you fall in love in the beginning and get back to that point where you have a connection and, and it needs to be really intimate. And guess what? Intimacy has nothing to do with sex. A lot of people don't understand it. I tell married couples that all the time. You have to be intimate with one another, meaning that you got to have a connection, a bond to the point where I can't do shit to hurt this person, especially intentionally. I have to really make decisions for myself and say, I'm doing this because I love this person. And, and, and the thing is, in this life, you can't stop people from coming at you sideways. I can never stop men from, from, from trying to talk to me. My husband can never stop women from trying to talk to him. But what I have control over is the way I respond to it. And I can respond in a way of saying, I know how to take a compliment, but I love my spouse just that much that I would never do that. But thank you for the compliment. The problem comes when people don't know how to take a compliment. 
or people don't know how to shut that shit down in the beginning and let the people that's trying to come in and interfere know that it ain't about to happen. You shut that shit down. And guess what? Even if you got to go on your social networks and block these motherfuckers to where they can never contact you again, that's just what the fuck you got to do. That is what you're doing when you're trying to rebuild trust. Some people, when they rebuild the trust, don't even need a social networking. Meaning that you don't even deserve Facebook and an Instagram and all that because you don't know how to handle it. It's just like trying to give a, a fucking newborn baby some, some real food. No. You got to give them small things that they can digest. Things that they can handle. And, and for some people, social networking is too stimulating for them. They can't handle it. So if you know that's you, and you know you're in a really, really bad place in your marriage, you got to shut that shit down. You got to say, you know what? I ain't ready for this shit because this shit provokes me. And it makes me want to do things that I don't want to do because I don't want to hurt this person. Simple as that. Rebuilding trust comes from within. But the thing is, the other person is just as bad as you want to rebuild it. And just as bad as you want it, they got to want it too. You can't, you can't want it more than them. And it ain't nothing that could be forced on nobody. Because I, I know a lot of times people be like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This will never happen again. This will never happen again. But guess what? You got to see change in that person. You got to see them making some changes within themselves. It ain't going to happen by them doing the same things that they have always been doing. Change has to happen. There's this book that I read when I was in college, and the name of the book is called After the Affair. I recommend it for anybody, especially, you know, we were um, made to read it in school. But that book helped me even in my marriage, even though it was an assignment. It helped me to understand why some things happen. And the thing is, a lot of times when people get married, they get occupied everywhere else but in their household. Meaning that now I have children. Now I've taken up to I'm being a PTA mom. Now I'm a soccer mom. Now I'm at all the basketball games. Now I'm ripping running. And guess what? You don't even realize, but you became the wife to your child or the husband to your child. And you neglecting your spouse. A lot of times people decide, well, I'm going to get in the social club. I'm going to get in the motorbike club. I'm going to get in this and I'm going to get in that. And you already working a full-time job. And you already being a fucking PTA mom, PTA dad. You already ripping and running the fucking children. How in the fuck do you think you're going to take on another thing? At what point in this relationship is the person that you laying next to getting some attention? If you always occupied everywhere else on top of working a full-time job and some of y'all on top of being a student, you got to have balance and you got to know that you can't take on something else. And even if it means that you got to drop some of these organizations to put your household first, then that's what got to happen. And you can't rip and run and do the bake sale at the church and be in the choir, the church and the board in the church and do this and that the other. And you ain't putting in that time in your house. Yeah, you love God, but yeah, you got to love God, but your family got to have a priority in there too. And it don't make you a bad parent because you say that, you know what? You got to decide if you're going to do cheerleading or you're going to do dance or you're going to do gymnastics, but you can't do all three. You ain't a bad parent because you tell your child you got to make a fucking choice because you're only one person and you still have an obligation to all of this other stuff too. You got to have balance in your relationship. You, it's a must. You have to continue to date your spouse. My husband and I, we spend so much time together. And he had to let me know, Sharonda, just because our businesses are right next door to each other and we see each other throughout the day, that does not mean that we're spending quality time. That means that we just work together. It's a difference. It's a difference because we can't discuss the things that's going on with us and, and, and building us because we're at the fucking workplace. And just because we there and we see each other don't mean that we spending quality time with each other. 
People got to understand balance. And you got to have that. And you got to have that time that you spend together. And when you get home, yeah, you got to spend time with your kids too. But at a certain time, you got to shut that shit down. Because then there's a time for you to spend time with your spouse. And be intimate with your spouse. And if that intimacy lead to fucking, then that's a great thing. But you got to do that too. You got to have time to spend by yourself. And to reflect. And put some time back into you. Balance. You got to have time that you spend with God. And I recommend that you do that when you first open your eyes up in the morning. The one thing that me and my husband has done as we have gotten older is we know that the beginning of our morning got to start with God. And the first thing we do when we wake up in the morning is we pray. And I ain't talking about me closing my eyes and just saying a prayer to myself. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we hold hands and connect. And we, we praying out loud. And we covering our family. And we covering our children before they leave throughout the day. Marriage is for grown people. Mature people. That understand the order. God. Then your spouse. Then your children. And then everything else. When you have a knowing and a true understanding about the order and the way things go. You don't have the desire for certain things. Because you understand the order. And guess what? The God in you. When some fuck shit come your way. It's going to convict you so fucking bad. And it's going to make you feel so fucking bad. So you will possibly never. Because you have a knowing in yourself about. You know that ain't right. And you will immediately get convicted. The Holy Spirit in you. Will convict you to the point where you will say, you know what? I can't ever do something like that to hurt this person or that person. Or I can't let this, I can't make this type of decision for my family. Because a lot of times, and I'm about to end this video because I know it's kind of lengthy. And I knew it would be kind of lengthy. But a lot of times when you make a fucked up decision, it don't just affect your spouse. But it affects your children. It, it, it affects your extended family and everything. Because guess what? I love my husband, but guess what? I love my in-laws and I love my nieces and nephews over there too. And I love my children. But when you have to make certain decisions for yourself and family and divorce and all this, you gotta, all of that comes into play. Because I can't imagine spending uh, my time and my holidays and all of this kind of stuff without all of these other people that I love too. So... You got to have order. You got to have balance. And you got to have boundaries. Boundaries. My number is public. 225-620-2138. It's public. It's a business line. My store is public. I can't control people talking and texting and calling and all of this kind of stuff and breathing heavy on my phone and saying what kind of blouse you have on today and all of this kind of stuff. But I understand that comes with the nature of the business. But guess what? At a certain time, I shut my phone down. It shut down because it's a certain time that's delegated to my family. And if you need to reach me bad enough, you'll call the store. You'll leave a message. You'll send a message on Facebook. You do all of that kind of stuff because I understand that there is balance and boundaries that have to go on with, I don't give a fuck what you do. When I taught school, I would come home and I would grade papers and at a certain time, my husband would let me know, look, you got to shut that shit down. You got off from work at three o'clock. He, well, he ain't had no problem with letting me know you got off at three. You need to find some time throughout the day and your work day to do that shit. Because when you come home, this ain't what the fuck I want us to be doing. It's okay for you to tell that to your spouse. If you need some extra time and extra attention, it's okay for you to say, look, baby, right now I need you, I need you more now than ever. I need you. It's okay to tell your spouse. It's okay to let your spouse know, look, when I go on my lunch break today, I need we need to meet. I just need to be in your presence. 
Because just being in your presence lets me know that everything going to be okay. Right now, I need you. It's okay to say that. So, again, rebuilding trust requires forgiveness. It requires transparency. It requires two people on the same page that want the same thing. It requires order in your household. I hope this video blesses somebody. I hope it helps somebody. I'm wrapping this thing up. I love y'all. Continue to inbox me. Continue to send your stories, your good things that happen because of whatever I shared, the bad things. Send it because guess what? This is all designed to help somebody. Please like and share. Book me for your party. Contact the store, 225-663-2982. I love y'all. Like it up. Share. Be blessed.